Hey everyone, Dr. Samantha Cotrera here for the Imagining a New We video blog. I am just doing a series of short videos for the next two weeks, introducing different activities and assignments that you can do in your classroom to bring in the ideas of digital pedagogy to teaching and learning history. And while the instructor's guide that I'm drawing this on, uh, drawing this from, was written primarily for college and university instructors, these activities and assignments will work great for middle school and high school students as well. And just to be clear, you don't need to know a lot of fancy tools and technologies to engage in digital humanities. It's just being more thoughtful in what we have available in terms of digital tools and technologies, but also digital, historical digital objects that we can now do analysis through and with that makes the digital humanities more than just um, than just like using these tools as a way as a means to an end like digital humanities allows us to be like the end So this is a series of three to five three to, three to five minute short videos introducing these activity guides But you can check out the ebook um, Without my narration to see how they can work in your classroom as well. Let me know if you use them I can't wait. I'm particularly incited and today we're going to be talking about Transcription and data visualization. These are pretty popular um, digital humanities activities and they're probably not surprising or unusual to you. Just a reminder that this activity guide as well as all nine activity guides can be found in this Doing the Digital Humanities and Social Studies in Your Classroom Instructor's Guide. It's free, it's an ebook, it's an open educational resource, um, uh, an OER that uh, has nine different assignment guides that are based on students' work. Now they were graduate and undergraduate students, but students that didn't know about the digital humanities. We took those activities and we brought them into assignment guides for teachers, uh, faculty members, instructors, etc. So data um, visualization and transcription is fairly straightforward. You are asking your students to transcribe and visualize a digitized document. Now it's not all about handwriting, so don't don't worry about that and, and please do not say, oh, students can't read handwriting anymore. Reading handwriting is hard. So <laughs> um, yeah, I have difficulty reading it too and I learned how to do handwriting. So anyway, um, you can use Word to do this, but you can also use some of these tools and all of these tools I've used and like, I don't really know a lot about this. They're all very easy to use. You're gonna ensure that students have an item to work on. You're gonna get students to create or or, um, or you create for them a mechanism for recording their transcription. So are they just doing a Word document? They're gonna transcribe the document. Then you run it through a data visualization tool to be able to analyze more meetings. This is a small to medium assignment. You can do this as an activity in class, but you can also use a harder document and have students to do it as homework. This, um, you can see some data visualization here. Robin did this work related to the Toronto Telegram. So the Toronto Telegram is a newspaper and that's all digitized, but the articles themselves aren't necessarily digitized. So you can find the articles, but the words aren't digitized digitized. So what she did was she took one of those articles and she transcribed it, which means she basically retyped it. Um, and what that means is that now this article from 1964 is available online and you can find it and read it um, and search for it in ways that you wouldn't have if it was just the um, the digitization. Oh, it's not loading right now. <laughs> the digitized um, uh, newspaper article. So you don't need to get your students to do handwriting. They can do a newspaper article as well and just retype it. This is actually a pretty good idea for students to do on their cell phones because, you know, it is good to think about students engaging in this work on their cell phones because like what, ask students to think like what is now available because of the fact that they type this out. And then if she puts it through or just like Robin did, um, a word like a word cloud generator, what does she learn about the text of the newspaper article that maybe she didn't know beforehand? Um, you can see more about her process here. You can read more about her process on her website. And there's a lot of 
um, transcription projects that are going around. I know there's a couple American ones and we've been talking on Twitter about some Canadian ones. Um, these tools are super easy to use. So this is kind of an interesting thing to get your students to think about making something available and accessible online and combining this with the metadata assignment can really help them think more about the critical aspect of digital access and preservation. Let me know if you use this activity and I'd love to hear what your students thought of it.